Lake Michigan is one of the largest and most mysterious freshwater lakes in the United States. And now, deep inside it, scientists have stumbled upon something unexplainable. Vast, round craters scattered all across the lake's floor. It all started in 2022. A team of researchers wanted to map the lake's bottom and look for some shipwrecks. At first, they were sure it's going to be just some typical rocky terrain or sandy patches. But what they saw on their sonar screens stopped them cold. Strange, circular shapes that looked almost too perfect to be natural. They were hiding about 500 feet beneath the surface, in places where the water turns dark and impenetrable. Those guys are huge, ranging from 300 to 600 feet wide. They also plunge nearly 40 feet deep. And there are dozens of them, neatly arranged like some footprints. But the team had no idea what these things were. Then, in August 2024, the mystery only deepened. Using a remotely operated vehicle, they got a closer look at these formations. There were about 40 of them. No one had ever seen anything quite like this before in the Great Lakes. What could have created those craters? Could they be ancient? Perhaps remnants of some geological event lost to time? If that's the case, it's weird how long these holes have likely been sitting there, undisturbed. Theories started popping up. One possibility was that they could be sinkholes or dolines. Those are basically holes that suddenly appear in the ground when the surface layer collapses. The rock beneath the surface, often made of limestone, gets slowly dissolved by water over time, creating voids underground. When the surface of those voids can no longer hold its own weight, it caves in, and this forms a hole. Think of it like when you poke a straw through the lid of a drink. Sinkholes can be small dips or huge, spanning up to 2,000 feet. They can happen gradually or all at once. Sometimes they can swallow entire cars or even buildings. And Lake Michigan sits on limestone bedrock. It erodes pretty easily when water flows through it. Sinkholes like these have already been found in Lake Huron, and they look kind of similar. But there are some plot holes, no pun intended, with this theory. For example, it's wild how they all would be so huge. It's also weird and pretty rare for sinkholes to occur in a lake bed. They also kind of resemble a straight pattern. They seem to extend generally southward, forming a loose line, which is pretty weird. If these are sinkholes, then they're definitely not playing the usual geological rules. Though it might be some new, unusual process at play beneath the lake's surface that we haven't discovered yet. There's another theory though, glaciers. Glaciers are wild rivers of ice. They covered much of the earth during the last ice age and they're incredibly powerful. While they might move slowly, sometimes only a few inches per day, they have such immense weight that they can reshape entire landscapes over thousands of years. Glaciers can grind and scoop the land beneath them. They're basically like colossal bulldozers. Their weight, combined with the slow but steady movement, grounds down everything beneath them. Rocks, soil, even bedrock. This can create deep gouges in the Earth's surface, called glacial troughs. During the last ice age, there were lots of glaciers all over the northern US, including the Great Lakes region. If they moved across what is now Lake Michigan, they could have carved out these deep holes. Glaciers often move in a pretty straight path. As they move, they cause terrain to erode, but the resulting erosion varies based on terrain. Sometimes there are places where the bedrock is softer or fractured, and these places are more easily carved and crushed by the glacier. That could explain why some holes could be bigger and deeper than others. Harder bedrock is less affected. But usually this leads to rounded, crescent-shaped depressions known as chatter marks. Those marks are more like grooves rather than circular, big craters like those in Lake Michigan. Once the glaciers melted, the Great Lakes themselves formed. If the craters were formed by them, they may have filled with water, becoming part of the Michigan Lake. 
though this theory is more like a speculation, so we need more evidence. But there's another layer to this mystery. The craters are not just curious geological formations. They actually may hold valuable clues about early life on Earth. Parts of Lake Michigan, especially dark ones, are relatively low in oxygen. It's like a lighter version of deep ocean environments that often have very little of this element. For example, hydrothermal vents deep in the ocean, underwater openings in the Earth's crust with some hot, mineral-rich water that are often very low in oxygen. But some organisms love places like these. For example, a possum shrimp. Teeny tiny shrimp-like creatures that love cold, deep waters. They get their name because they have a pouch to carry their young until they're ready to be on their own, like an opossum. Or deep water sculpin fish, small bottom-dwelling fish that also enjoys cold lakes. They're well adapted to living in dark waters and usually stay close to the lake bed. And weird organisms like invasive quagga mussels, which kind of look like shells. These are small freshwater mussels that have spread there to the Great Lakes. They attach themselves to hard surfaces and can cause problems for ecosystems by competing with native species for food and space. All these guys could be in Lake Michigan, and even more. There might be microbes or even bacteria that are specially adapted to these harsh conditions, just like it was in Lake Huron. There's only a handful of creatures that could survive deep within these craters. And studying them could give us insight into how life once flourished in Earth's ancient, oxygen-poor oceans. That's because it's in places similar to these, where some of the earliest life forms thrived. Early Earth had an atmosphere with little oxygen, although it was much more hot and ancient microbes adapted to this. The Great Lakes, especially Lake Michigan, have always had a bit of a ghostly reputation. Like even this mission was organized to study the shipwrecks. There were about 6,000 of them in the Great Lakes. Many of these wrecks are still sitting on the lake beds, preserved by the cold, fresh waters. And shipwrecks aren't the only strange things tied to the Great Lakes. Over the years, there have been stories of unexplained disappearances. Boats and even planes have vanished without a trace. The lakes, often calm on the surface, can suddenly turn dangerous with unpredictable storms and massive waves, leading to these mysterious events. Not even mentioning all the creepy stuff people noticed there over the centuries, such as ghostly lights above water or bizarre weather patterns like eerie, sudden fogs that seem to appear out of nowhere. In 2007, they even discovered some prehistoric structure that looks like Stonehenge there. Well, it was way smaller, but still. It lay about 40 feet below the surface in the heart of Grand Traverse Bay, and it's speculated to be about 9,000 years old, way older than Stonehenge. Looks like this is a print of those who lived in the area thousands of years ago. These massive stones are arranged in a careful, winding pattern stretching over a mile. They range in size from basketballs to compact cars. But one, in particular, stands out. A boulder three and a half to four feet tall, five feet wide. It's etched with the image of a mastodon, a creature that roamed the Earth about 11,000 years ago before it went extinct. It probably sank there during the end of the last ice age we mentioned. This period had reshaped the region. This place is underwater now, but back in the day, it was still dry land. So the stones were probably created by people who lived there, though we're not sure why. Were they used as hunting blinds? Or was it some sort of an ancient calendar? Who knows? Only about 15% of the Great Lakes floors have been explored. Now, scientists are gearing up for a deeper dive into this mystery, both literally and figuratively. They want to analyze the lake beds surrounding the craters hoping that maybe something in the environment around them might have caused them to appear. They have initiatives like Lake Bed 2030. These missions should map the entire underwater landscape. This would help us learn tons of interesting stuff about Lake Michigan and our planet's past. Who knows what other secrets these dark waters hide?
That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.